afternoon sessions. And Henrik will finish his talk on the young Niels Einstein theory as a double double cow piece. Thanks. Um, yeah, so the other end of this talk is that first of all talk about the possible uh, uh, generalizations of collection maxuality and or abstractions to generalizing. Um, and then <coughs> I will talk about And then I will talk about um, a particular uh, simple theory, which is Jack Mills theory coupled to scalars. Uh, how this is related to uh, gravity uh, coupled to Jack Mills theory. And then I will give some examples at the loop level. Blue parameters. Um, and if I have time, I might mention something more, which I'm not going to write out for now. <coughs> okay, so just to recap a little bit about last time and also uh, Svi's uh, colloquium yesterday. <coughs> so um, I told you about color climatic strategy. And how this, <coughs> the simplest way to see that is to write that Young Mills amplitude at that point in terms of this formula. So now let me just do it at three level. So sum over all graphs and then all the numerators, color factors, and, and denominators, propagators. And then <coughs> corresponding double copy. which gives gravity. These are just a couple things. So this is just two copies of numerators, which in principle can be different. Um, and I give some examples. So uh, you can pick Ni and see, some more space. Triple. So you can pick it to be n equals 4 to pre Mills, for example, on both sides. And this will give, uh, this will give, uh, so this will give n equals 8 uh, supergravity. Um, <coughs> but you can do, you can, you can, well, you can keep n equals 4 on one side. And you can go down n equals, for example, say one to pre Mills. And this will give n equals, uh, n equals five supergravity, and so on. Um, and you can go down to n equals zero, and you can go down to n equals zero on both sides. So this is just pure Young Mills. N equals zero, uh, gravity. <coughs> We've actually an Adela Tons, but let's ignore that for the moment. So, uh, <coughs> so you see, it already we can construct several different theories, and uh, you can ask now the question: Okay, maybe this is a more general structure because we can do it for more than one theory. Uh, but of course, the set of these theories here are it's a very limited set of all possible supergravities that you can consider. Sorry, if I yeah. take n equals two times n equals two, what does yeah. I get? Uh, the same as n equals four times n equals zero. It's it's not exactly the same, but it's like it's close. So it, it will give you an n equals four theory, but as you know, n equals four theories are not unique. So uh, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get n equals two supergravity plus uh, matter. N equals four supergravity. Oh, sorry, n equals four. Good. Yeah. So. Um, so this is a sort of reflection that when you start having n equals four, there's more than one way of doing things. Um, and, and, sorry, what are the values of n that the series exists between the safe points? So there's n equals five and 
Yeah, so, well, there is, if I just write it here, so that's of course n equals 8, uh, and then there's 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. <laughs> I mean, that's the, um, yeah, don't ask me why, well, n equals 7 is missing for an obvious reason, because if you try to do n equals 7, it adds up to n equals 8 by CPT uh, variance, or by adding two multiplets. N equals, uh, okay, yeah, so that's the only one missing, so, yeah. And, and uh, if you want to have matter multiplets, you can only have n equals 4? Yeah, so if you want to have matter, then you can only have this guy. Uh, wait, yeah. Oh, let me not write. So starting here, you can have matter. And when I say matter, I mean gauge field and, and, and below and lower spin field. Okay. So, yes. Yeah. Is this true only for tree diagrams or it's true? Um, this, is, um, this has been proven to be true for tree level diagrams. And it's, it's essentially the same thing as KLT, a tree level. But, um, but we conjecture that it works at loop level using these formulas. You just have to integrate the, loop, the numerator will depend on loop momentum, and you have to integrate of the loop momentum. And we showed in the explicit, explicit, explicit examples where this works. So, for example, all of this series, uh, all the way down to n equals zero, has been checked at one loop far point. Some series has been checked to higher loops. N equals eight supergravity has been checked. Uh, that it's worked up to four loops, uh, n equals five, four loops, n equals four, four loops as well. Uh, but then n equals four and below, oh, sorry, n equals th three and below only at one loop. So uh, we believe that to work in general. So this, 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 all these questions actually uh, connect to uh, what I'm going to say next. So, so we, we we obviously have examples where we have. Uh, as, uh, a range of theories which work, but these theories are a very limited set of all possible supergravities. So you might ask a question, um, what about supergravities which are not in this classification? Um, what Do they work? So, all credit. Well, I'm not going to answer that question, but uh, we can try to uh, you know, think about what sort of difficulties will arise in trying to answer that question. So what are the difficulties? Well, um, there are many theories, most theories are not the truncation of n equals 8. All of these theories are truncation, truncations of n equals 8, but most trees are not. So the spectrum is in general not a truncation. Um, furthermore, all these theories here um, are essentially uh, factorized, so the spectrum is factorized. And what do I mean by that? I just mean that I just mean that if you look at the gravity spectrum, it's it's obviously a tensor product of of a gauge theory. Of two gauge theories. For example, N equals eight supergravity spectrum is obviously a tensor product of, of N equals four spectrum. For example, there's 256 states here, there's 16 states here, 16 here, 16 times 6 and 256. But this is not true in general. Um, furthermore, 
as, as the questions alluded to, when you're at n equals 4 or below, um, there's a lot of things which are not unique. For example, uh, the spectrum is not unique. The spectrum is not fixed by supersymmetry. Uh, second of all, so this is when you're exactly, well, n equals 4 and below, and when you're at n, n less than 4, then even if you have the spectrum, interactions are not fixed. Um, there could be a local and global symmetries which are not um, the standard super uh, symmetries. So it could be extra. So this is beyond. Super um, there could be um, there could be several couplings. This, for example, in this formula, I just put the coupling on the outside, and then everything else is free of the coupling. Uh, this, this obviously you cannot do if you have several couplings. Um, there could be other kinds of matter. For example, there could be um, uh, tensor matter. I mentioned that because it's uh, very interesting to study such theories in, in, in D equals 6, for example. And, and um, so in, in supergravity theories in six dimension, um, there's always lots of tensor fields. Um, so um, that's an interesting thing to study. So this could be, stu in particular, uh, many theories are known, uh, especially when non uh, with abelian tensors, but um, of course, there's a lot of interest in studying. Non abelian. There could be massive fields. So uh, that goes back to having more than one uh, coupling, because you can think of mass as a coupling. And then I'm running out of space, but the last thing I want to say is there could be absence of flat space. So some gauge supergravities, they don't have a flat space uh, vacuum, they have an ADS space. And of course then, since we're talking about scattering amplitudes, we don't really know what to do. So this is just a, a few of the problems, and I'm sure there are many more which I haven't even thought about. So you can add your own um, problems here. Uh, and of course this is many things to think about, but um, today I'm going to talk about one generalization uh, and, and this inner session actually interestingly addresses several of these uh, problems. Um, so, um, so the simple extension is, this port, is uh, is uh, gravity coupled to a diagonal series. Otherwise, uh, known as Engels Einstein theory or Einstein Engels. So, um, let me just say a little bit about this theory and then we'll check um, what sort of problems that arise with this theory. So, 
So first of all, the spectrum. So in the most simple case, we're just going to assume that the spectrum is just a graviton and a gauge field. And uh, excuse, excuse me for this poor notation. Um, but, um, and interestingly, uh, this of course has two couplings. It has a gravitational coupling, kappa. And it has a gauge coupling, G. And in particular, let me just write up uh, like a uh, Lagrangian. So, um, so it's basically just ordinary, I said Hilbert term. Plus, um, well, you can think of it as basically being um, uh, the f squared term. <coughs> and if you have multiple vectors, which we assume we have, there's an index um, we call it a. a. Uh, of course, uh, in order to couple this theory, I also have to have. Uh, I also have to have. Uh, um, square root of g, but uh, let me not call it g because I have a g there, so let me call it uh, e for the determinant of, of the field line, and I'm going to put it on this side here. Um, so um, so if, if, this, if, this, um, if the vectors are tr truly uh, non-abelian, then it's Yangnil's Einstein theory. Uh, but if you have a billion, then we will have uh, Maxwell uh, Einstein theory. And of course, um, the super symmetri symmetric extension of these guys, and as already alluded to, I can extend this to either n equals 0, 1, uh, 2, or 4. Um, and then I use the word acronym. So angles Einstein supergravity. So that's essentially the theories I want to talk about. Uh, of course, this is this is only in the most simple case where we don't have additional uh, uh, matter multiplets in, in in a fundamental or whatever. So it's just the simplest case. But although this case is interesting enough. Um, is this important? Um, it's going to be in general dimension, so I'm not going to care about the dimension so much. But uh, when I come to specific so examples, I'm going to talk about five dimensions and four dimensions. So first of all, we can see that, well, obviously a spectrum is not a truncation of n equals 8, because I can have arbitrarily many vectors. Um, and in this particular case, the spectrum is not factorized. Um, and um, I'm not going to, this talk is not going to be about, uh, so let me just put a marker here. So the spectrum is not factorized, but I'm not going to talk about that issue. I'm mostly going to ignore that in this talk. Uh, we know how to deal with it, but since I'm going to ignore this talk, you can think of uh, actually adding a few more states here. So in principle, I should add to dilaton. Dilaton in the uh, B mu nu field. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to gloss over that fact for most of this talk. Um, but um, now I'm going to talk about theories which has less than n equals 4 supersymmetry, so I'm definitely going to have to think about these issues. Um, and there's going to be extra local and global symmetries, which are just, well, engaged, engaged symmetry in particular. There are several couplings, right? There's uh, it's going to be kappa and it's going to be g, so two couplings. Now the other ones I'm not going to consider, but that's at least all of these points are going to be addressed partially by looking at this example. Okay, so let's try to construct a double copy which gives this theory. So 
the, the first thing we have to think about is to get the right spectrum. Um, or I mean, let's say, let's backtrack a bit. So the, so the goal here is to figure out what series goes into and That's a goal, um, and uh, the first thing to figure the way to figure that out is first of all look at the spectrum. So if the spectrum comes out correct, oh, it was started here. So I think that I have to avoid. Um, so um, so we had h mu nu. And somehow we need to write it as a product of two things. Now this is gonna gonna be very precise, but um, it's this is gonna be hold this is this is gonna hold for the on shell field, the physical fields, not necessarily for the off shell fields. But anyhow, I can write something like this. So it looks like I could factorize this into a product of two gauge fields. And similarly. Similarly, if I have um, my Yang Mills field, which has two indices, a space M index and a group index, it looks like I can also factorize that in terms of AVU and then a scalar, which has this uh, um, group index. Now it looks, it looks a bit funny because I don't have group indices here. But remember when we construct double copies, from a theory, we always drop the color structure. So that's why I also dropped the color structure here to suppress the group index. OK, so just from this, just for this simple exercise, you can already tell something. Um, it looks like we should factorize the theory in some way such that we always have this fields in one factor and this fields in another factor. So this looks like just ordinary Yang Mills theory. And then on the other side, it looks like we have Yang Mills theory plus a scalar theory. Now we still don't know exactly what the interactions are. Well, for Yang Mills, we can. Well, the gauge field, we can guess that they're just the ordinary and Mills interactions. But exactly how does the scalar interact is not known. So in order to look at the, inter I mean, in order to know the interactions, we need to look, uh, we need to check that we re reproduce the correct interaction. So we need to look at the three-point functions, three-point amplitude. Um, so in particular, particular, first of all, we want to get the right gravitational amplitude. So let's assume we're scattering uh, three, um, three gravitons. So that's being denoted by this. Um, so this should just be a product of A1 um, plus per uh, A field vector And essentially, you can square this thing here, so I'm not going to write it twice. So that this interaction is no different from the interactions in just ordinary and pure supergravity. But then we have some scattering amplitudes between um, the scalars and the vectors, so let's consider that, or between uh, gravitons and, and vectors. So um, first of all, this is going to be the same object as here. Let's copy that now.
Um, but now we already have the right polarization structure for these fields here. So what we should do next is we should have the scalars there. So. so in this leg two and three, we're going to have scalars. So now the helicity structure is correct. So the graviton has uh, spin two, and the vectors will have spin well, helicity plus and the helicity minus one. OK, so still, actually, we're not talking about the case of uh, Yang Mills Einstein supergravity, because we still haven't actually looked at the Yang Mills interaction. So the last amplitude we look, need to look at is between Yang Mills fields themselves. So, so we have this amplitude. Um, now, uh, this is pretty simple. It essentially has to be itself. Still has to be a double copy of something. So it has to be something else as well. So uh, the only thing one can think about is having a three scalar interaction. <coughs> now I call this I call the Young Mills amplitude with an A and the gravity amplitude with an M, but it's really the same amplitude. Um, is there no color factor in this expression? Yeah, so this is color strip. This, I mean, at the three-point level, these are just the numerators, because there's no denominator at three-point. So, um, I think I've run out of space there. But, um, let, me, let me copy that formula over here. So um, since this amplitude and this amplitude are the same, this amplitude has to be 1. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Uh, so the question is, do we, know, do we know a theory where three scalar interacting just gives an amplitude which is 1, appropriately normalized? And yes, indeed, we, need, we do know, know such a theory. So that's, that's phi cubed. And possibly if we put in a coupling, that's a lambda phi cubed. Uh, so here, here essentially dropped all the couplings, but um, I could put them back in. So here, there should be a kappa here, because this is gravitational interaction. Here should be a kappa, and here should be a kappa. Uh, and then there should be a lambda here, so we need to erase that and put a lambda instead. So now, um, you can see an interesting thing happening already here is that um, this is supposed to be a Young Mills amplitude, but it's going to have a product between kappa and lambda. So, so if you call it gauge coupling, G has to be a relation like this, kappa times lambda, G. And you can see that that makes, dimension, that makes sense dimensionally, because if this interaction is part of a gauge theory, a lambda has to have dimension one, 